Welcome to Health and Bible Time. Today, I start with a question. Does God lie? The answer from the Bible in Titus 1-2 is God cannot lie. In my last video titled New Year's Diet and Being Encouraged in the Plan of Salvation, I said I would do a video on the promises of God made to his children. First, you must be his child. If you have never been saved, born again into God's family, please stop this video and find the one I just mentioned. I explain God's plan of salvation that is offered to every person as a free gift. Then come back to this video and learn more of what we have as God's children. My first promise I want to share is the longest because it's so important to know and to believe. So I'm going to make more than one video about the amazing promises from God. The first promise is God says he will never leave you. So you are never alone once you're his child. All the way through the entire Bible this is shown. From God walking with Noah and Abraham and Isaac and I love the verse that God promises to Jacob. It's while Jacob is dreaming and God speaks to him from above the ladder. It's in Genesis 28, 15, and I wanna show that to you. Genesis 28, 15, God is speaking to Jacob in a dream. And he says, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. I think that is one of the most beautiful verses. And God, does, he never leaves Jacob. But boy, what a messed up life. He, he First he's given the wrong woman for a wife, and he has to work seven more years to get the right one. Keep in mind, he had to leave his home, his mom, his dad, to be lied to, to be deceived by his now father-in-law. Then the story of his 12 children. He did not live a charmed life at all. God uses real people in the Bible, just like you and me, so that we can relate to them and we can see God in their lives to help us in our lives. But Jacob, in the end of his life, I want to show you Genesis 48, verse 15. In Genesis 48, 15, he is praising God. Jacob, after they've just been through famine, possibly are still in famine, near the end of his life, Jacob says, The God which fed me all my life long unto this day, because he knew and believed God that God was with him and never left him, even through some bad days of his life. Then we have Joseph, his son. Joseph, now if you are hurting right now, Joseph's story in the Bible is a really good one to read. Joseph went through one of the hardest times in the Bible. Uh, there's just a few people that really had it hard. And Joseph was one of them. He was hated by his brothers. He was sold by them to be taken away from his mom and dad and his home. At the age of 17, he had to have felt alone. But he obviously got up and did right to be promoted as he was. Now, in the end of his hard times, I want to show you what he said. Joseph, in Genesis 45, verse 8, says, So now, it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Do you know who he's talking to? He's talking to his brothers. I wrote at the top, but God, because it was God. And he's speaking to his brothers who sold him. And he says, it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And then... He continues talking to them in chapter 50 of Genesis. One of the most profound statements in the Bible. He says, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God 
meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. They thought it for evil, but God meant it unto good, and Joseph knew this. That is amazing. It was God that allowed this in his entire life to bring him to this point. That is huge. When you can look at those that hurt you so deeply and are able to say that and acknowledge God is completely in control of your life, just as he was Joseph's. And then we have Moses. The same thing. God planned Moses' birth during one of the most awfulest times ever. But. God was with Moses the whole time. His life wasn't easy, but God was with him. And then we have Daniel, also taken from his home as a young man, possibly young child, to live in a heathen land with people that did not like him, but God. Those two words, if you write them with capital letters with exclamation marks after them, but God. God was able to do great things in Daniel's life because he purposed in his heart he would be all that he knew God wanted him to be. And then we have the story of Esther, and we have the story of David, and we have the story of Job. Have you ever felt like them when they cry? David's cry in Psalms 142. This is Psalms 142, verse 1 through 4. And David is crying out to God. And he says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Have you ever felt like this? I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I have... the Sorry. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me? I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Have you ever felt that way? Like David did when he wrote that? And then I have Job's cry. When Job cried out, In chapter 23 of the book of Job, Job says to God, he's crying out, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. And if you drop down here to verse 8, he says, behold, I go forward, but he is not there and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. Have you ever felt like David? And have you ever felt like Job? You cry and you say, refuge has failed me. David, I want to encourage you. These are words that he wrote later because he knew God never left him. Job knew God never left him. And these are words that David said when David is, it's David's prayer and he's before the people and he says, wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, blessed be thou Lord God of Israel, our father forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. When you're down and you feel like crying like David did, read the cries, cry them out to God, and then praise God. Lift God up. It will lift your spirits. I promise you it does amazing wonders when you thank him and you praise him. 
And I love the end of this. This was in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 10 through 13. And at the end of this, it says, And he died in good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. That's speaking of David that cried out. I want to encourage you with this. And then we have the encouraging words of Job. Job, the verses that we read with his cry were chapter 23, verse 2 and 3, and 8 and 9. And right after that, he praises God because he knows even though it's awful, it's hard, and he doesn't see God, he says in verse 10 of chapter 23, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And he says, My foot hath held his steps. His ways have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Let that one sink in. That's, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is in one mind. And who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. Think about that. God's doing the thing. God is performing the thing that is appointed for you. When you cry to God, like David did and like Job did, read their verses, cry the same, same words out to God, but then also read where they praise God and they acknowledge that when he hath tried you, you can come forth as gold. Don't let your feet slip. Keep his ways and don't decline. And praise him through it all. Praise him. They never lost their faith in God. Were they perfect? No. Very human and very fallible. David shows us that. But they got up and they continued. Another one that I really love in 2 Timothy, Paul says to Timothy in chapter 4, verse 16. He's talking to Timothy and he's telling him a time in his life. And he says, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. But the very next verse in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. When you feel like no man stands with you, know that God is with you. He is always with you. If you are his child, he lives within you. And one of my most favorite promises to get us through hard times, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Concentrate on that one. Dwell on that verse. He will not leave thee nor forsake thee, which brings us to the one that's in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. He says the same thing, quoting that. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we, me and you, may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man should do unto me. Write these verses down, hang them up, concentrate on them, meditate on them. I will not fear what man shall do unto me because the Lord is my helper. Which brings me to my very last one. I want to do a video, hopefully on Psalms 91 and the amazing verses in it and other verses that are like it about being under the shadow of the Almighty like it says in verse 1. But verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Can you say that today? Know that he is your refuge even when you don't see them. See him. He's with you. He's never taken his eyes off of you. He's with you so that you can boldly say, 
that God is my refuge. So I want to encourage you, no matter how dark your life seems, God is with you. Stop right now and feel his arms holding you. He's near you. He's with you. Climb under his wings for safety. It's a safe place. Spend time in Psalms 91. If you're watching on Facebook, sign into your YouTube and please subscribe. Once you subscribe, there's a little bell over to the right. If you tap on it and then hit all, you'll be notified when I make the next video about the promises of God and another one on Psalms 91. Read the verses about being under the shadow of his wings. It's an amazing study. Thank you so much for watching my video on health and Bible time. Please subscribe. I want to encourage you in your walk with God. I want to encourage you with God's word. We need God's word. Please be in your Bible. Read Psalms 91 and know that he's with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.